let's say that we have a first order differential equation and we're trying to solve for y as a function of t and let's say that our equation holds the form the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to some function that we will call g and it's a function of the linear combination between t and y and we will call their coefficients a and b respectively and the way we would solve such an equation is by converting it to a separable differential equation using substitution so we can say that v is equal to this linear combination a times t plus b times y and when we differentiate this we get the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to a plus b times the derivative of y with respect to t and then we can solve for the derivative of y by subtracting a from both sides and dividing by b and when we do that we get the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to 1 over b times the derivative of v with respect to t minus a. Now at this point we can complete the substitution by plugging in these values back into the original equation. And so when we do that the derivative of y becomes 1 over b times the derivative of v with respect to t minus a and that will be equal to g of v because remember we said that v is the linear combination a t plus b y so what we have here is a separable differential equation so we can separate by first multiplying by b from both sides and then adding a to solve for the derivative of v so when we do that we get the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to a plus b times g of v so when we complete the separation we get 1 over a plus b times g of v dv is equal to dt and finally we can integrate both sides and then back substitute and solve the equation in terms of y let's make things more concrete by solving this initial value problem now we can start by solving for the derivative of y so adding this term to both sides will give us the derivative of y and I'm using the Leibniz notation here with respect to t is equal to 4t minus y plus 1 all that is squared so the first step of solving this equation is using substitution so we can say that v is equal to this linear combination of t and y and we don't have to include this constant term 1 so we can just say that v is equal to 4t minus y and when we differentiate this we get the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to 4 minus the derivative of y with respect to t and when we solve for the derivative of y by subtracting 4 and then dividing by negative 1 we get the derivative of y with respect to t is equal to 4 minus the derivative of v with respect to t and now to complete the substitution we will plug in these values back into our original equation so when we do that we will get 4 minus the derivative of v with respect to t is equal to v plus 1 squared 
because remember that we said v is equal to this part of the equation 4t minus y. And now we can start the separation process by subtracting 4 from both sides. So when we do that, we get negative derivative of v with respect to t is equal to v plus 1 squared minus 4. And then we will separate the negative derivative and that will give us dv is equal to negative dt times v plus 1 squared minus 4. And finally, when we divide this term from both sides, we will get 1 over v plus 1 squared minus 4 dv is equal to negative dt. Now that we have our equation separated, we could integrate both sides like this. And for the left side, we will use partial fraction to integrate it. First, we will simplify the denominator. So this can be rewritten as the integral of 1 over v squared plus 2v plus 1 minus 4 is minus 3. dv is equal to the integral of negative dt, which can be simplified as the integral of 1 over v plus 3 times v minus 1 dv is equal to the integral of negative dt. Now that we have simplified the left side of the equation, we will do partial fraction decomposition, which means we will replace this rational function 1 over v plus 3 times v minus 1 with the sum of two fractions, some constant a over v plus 3 plus some other constant b over v minus 1. And we need to figure out what these two constants a and b are. So we can start by multiplying both sides by v plus 3 times v minus 1. So when we do that, on the left side, we will be left with just 1. And on the right side, we will have a times v minus 1 plus b times v plus 3. So now to figure out what a is, we will first look at the case when v is equal to negative 3. Because when we replace v with negative 3, we will have 1 is equal to a times negative 3 minus 1 plus b times negative 3 plus 3. And so this term cancels out because this is 0. And so what we're left with is 1 is equal to negative 4a. And when we divide negative 4 from both sides, we get a is equal to negative 1 fourth. So now that we figured out what a is, let's figure out what b is by setting this to 0 which means we were considering the case when v is equal to 1. And so when we replace v with 1, we will get 1 is equal to a times 1 minus 1 plus b times 1 plus 3. And so this cancels out because it's 0, and what we're left with is 1 is equal to 4b. 
And so when we divide 4 from both sides, we get b is equal to 1 fourth. So now that we have figured out what these constants a and b are, we can complete our partial fraction decomposition by saying that this is equal to negative 1 fourth over phi plus 3 plus 1 fourth over v minus 1. So now we can plug this into the left side of our equation and we can actually factor out 1 fourth and rearrange it. So our equation will become 1 fourth times the integral of 1 over v minus 1 minus 1 over v plus 3 dv is equal to the integral of negative dt. So now when we integrate the left side becomes 1 fourth times the natural log of v minus 1 minus the natural log of v plus 3 is equal to when we integrate the right side we just get negative t plus the constant of integration and we can simplify the left side as one fourth times the natural log of v minus 1 over v plus 3 and it will be equal to negative t plus c and when we multiply both sides by 4 we get the natural log of v minus 1 over v plus 3 is equal to negative 4t plus 4c. But because c is an unknown constant, 4c is also an unknown constant, so we will just call that whole term c. And so now when we exponentiate both sides, on the left side we'll, we're just left with v minus 1 over v plus 3. And on the right side we get e raised to negative 4t plus c which is the same thing as e raised to the constant c times e raised to negative 4t and again because c is an unknown constant e raised to the power of c is also an unknown constant so we can call that c so we can say that that's c times e raised to the power of negative 4 times t. So now we can multiply both sides by v plus 3 and that will give us v minus 1 is equal to c times e raised to negative 4t times v plus 3. And when we distribute c e to the negative 4t on the right side we get v times c e to the negative 4t plus 3 c e to the negative 4t and then we add the one to both sides that will give us v is equal to v c e to the negative 4t plus 3 c e to the negative 4t plus 1 and then we can subtract v c e to the negative 4 t from both sides we get v minus v c e to the negative 4 t is equal to 3 c e to the negative 4 t plus 1 and then on the left side we can factor out v and we get v times 1 minus c e to the negative 4 t is equal to 3 c e to the negative 4 t plus 
1. So now we can solve for v by dividing this from both sides. That will give us v is equal to 3ce to the negative 4t plus 1 over 1 minus ce to the negative 4t. So now that we have solved the equation in terms of v, we can back substitute and solve for y. And remember that we said v is equal to this linear combination of t and y. So v was equal to 4t minus y. So when we back substitute, the equation becomes 4t minus y equal to 3ce to the negative 4t plus 1 over 1 minus c times e to the negative 4t. And so now to solve for y, we will subtract 4t from both sides and we will divide both sides by negative 1. And when we do that, we get y is equal to 4 t minus 3 c e to the negative 4 t plus 1 over 1 minus c e to the negative 4 t. So now that we have our general solution, we will plug in the value of our initial condition to solve for the constant c. And when we do that, we get 2 is equal to 4 times 0 minus 3 c e to the negative 4 times 0 plus 1 over 1 minus c e to the negative 4 times 0. So this cancels out and this just becomes 1 so does this. So we're left with 2 is equal to negative 3c plus 1 over 1 minus c. And when we multiply 1 minus c to both sides, we get 2 minus 2c is equal to negative 3c minus 1. And when we add 3c plus 1 to both sides, we get 2 minus 2c plus 3c plus 1 is equal to 0. When we combine the like terms, we get 3 plus 1, 1c or just c is equal to 0. And when finally, when we subtract 3, we get c is equal to negative 3. So there you go. Now that we have our constant, we can plug it in. So we will get y of t is equal to 4t minus 3 times negative 3 is negative 9 e to the negative 4t plus 1 over 1 plus 3e to the negative 4t. And this is the particular solution that satisfies our initial condition.